So if you want to make your text wrap around something in your photo like you see in the magazines, then you might have gone ahead into Photoshop and created a new text layer, tried to type something out, and then just format it manually to fit around the edges that you're looking for. If you've done that exact thing like I have, then you probably realize it's a total waste of time and there's a way easier way of wrapping your text around things. In this tutorial, I'm going to share the easiest methods to do it, whether you want to create a custom text shape or just use one of the shape tools. So with that, let's get started. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and today I want to share a really easy way to wrap your text around any shape you want here in Photoshop. Now whether you want to create a custom shape to wrap around say a person in your photo or just use one of the preset shape tool options found in Photoshop, I'm going to share both of those methods here in this video. So let's hop into Photoshop and see how all of this works. So in this image, let's say I want to create a big block of text all in this empty area, wrapping around the shape of this person's face. The first thing I need to do is create some sort of a grid for myself to make sure I have a nice 90 degree angles for the outside of my text. Now to do that, it's really easy with the ruler tool, just press command or control R to access the ruler, then click on the ruler and then drag down. And I'm just gonna add a guide somewhere around here and then another guide here and another one at the very bottom. So what this will do is helps define the outside of my text. So it's just really easy to trace around knowing that I have perfectly straight lines since we're gonna be using our pen tool. Now that we have these guides in place, let's go and create a path for our text to follow. And the easiest way to do that is using the pen tool like I just mentioned. So just access that pen tool by pressing P and then we'll start up here on the grid. I'm gonna click on the grid to add a new anchor point about the distance that I want my text to be from my subject. From there, I'm going to click and add more anchor points around my subject. And if you're unfamiliar with how to use the pen tool, I highly suggest checking out my previous tutorial where I talk about the pen tool more in depth. In this case, we're just clicking and dragging if we wanna curve one of those anchor points, but we're gonna go all the way around the one side of our subject to define where the edge of the text is going to be. So you can manually decide how far away your text is going to be from your subject depending on how far away your path is from the actual person or whatever shape you're trying to go around. So all the way down here to the guide and then I'm going to follow the guides clicking on the corners here to finish up my path all the way around and then connecting to the initial one. Now with that complete, I'm going to select my text tool by pressing T. Now with my text tool, notice how when I'm outside of the path, I have a square icon. So that's just going to create text in a general line like it normally does and give us the same problem as before. But since we have this path created, if I go on the inside, notice how it becomes a circle, square, circle. That means that circle is indicating that I'm writing the text inside of the path. So my text will be stuck inside of this shape that we just created. So clicking in there to add that text, I've added some placeholder text here automatically. And now look how this text is following along the edges of our path. Now I'll just paste this to add in some more words here. You can now see that our text easily flows along all the edges that we just created with the pen tool. Now one thing that you might be facing is your text might look something like this. So it's all to the one side of your path that has a straight line, but you want it to fit and flow along all of those curves that you've made. So in that case, depending on the shape of your path, try to go between the different alignment options right up here at the top. So with your text layer selected and the text tool active, you can just press the different options here to align your text in different ways. In this case, since I want the text to go along this right hand edge, I can align it to the right. And now all of that text is going to fit nicely along that edge. So just selecting a different tool to hide that, I'll then get rid of the guides by going up to view and then clear guides. And now we have our text fitting around the shape that we just created. So now that you know how to wrap text around a person, let's go and wrap text around a shape such as a circle, for example. In our new document here, we want to first create a circle and we can do that using the ellipse tool. So clicking on the ellipse tool right here, I'm going to make sure that the option is set to path and not shape. So clicking on path, that's going to create a similar thing to what we just did with the pen tool. Rather than creating a circle with color inside of it, this will just create a path for our text to fit inside of. So clicking and dragging out to 
create a new path. You can hold the shift key if you want to create a perfect circle, and then you can hold the space bar to move the circle all at once. So I'm going to position this right in the middle like so. And then now we have a path created. So just like before, I'm going to now grab my text tool by pressing T and then I'll click on the inside of the circle. I'm going to bring down my font size since it's so large from before. And now our text is following the same shape as our circle. So if I just scale this up a little bit more and then change the alignment to center, then it's going to fit more of a circular shape from the get go there like we're going for. So once I hide that path, we now have our text in a circle shape without a bunch of manual formatting like you might have done previously by adding some spaces or hitting the enter key a bunch of times or something like that. Now what we just did with the circle here applies to all other shapes as well. So let's just delete this text and start again with a new shape. I'm gonna go and select the triangle tool this time and then I'll click and drag out to create a new triangle holding the shift key to keep it nice and uniform. Holding the space bar to move it all together and then now I'll just let go. Once again, the option is set to path and not shape. That's a really important step for this. Now I'll grab my text tool by pressing T, click on the inside of that triangle. Now all of our text fits in a different way to fit that triangle shape. Now what if you want to actually have a color in the background of your text? For example, I want the background of this to be maybe a green or a blue color. Well, in that case, I would actually have to start again and use the shape option. So let's just delete this and then once again, grab that triangle tool, but this time we'll set it to shape. We'll then have to pick a background color, which I can do by clicking on the fill option, clicking on this color picker right here, and then selecting a green of my choosing. Of course, you can pick any color you'd like from this option. Clicking OK, I can now go and create a new triangle. Once again, dragging out, holding the shift key, holding the space bar to position my triangle where I want and now it's gonna be filled with a color. This time when I go and select the text tool by pressing T, I can once again click inside of that triangle or that shape to add my text into the photo. This time our text is applied in the exact same way as before, except now it has that colored background because we have the triangle as a shape and not a path. So when you're using a shape instead of a path, you can control all the colors in your shape. If you don't wanna have any colors behind your shape, then you wanna set it to the path mode instead. So that is how you can wrap your text around people or shapes here in Photoshop. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something today, then make sure to hit that like button down below as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more editing tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.